Guys, look, I've actually built a space elevator slash orbital tether in survival. Whoop, whoop. Right, um, so this isn't actually the final place I want to do this, I'm pretty sure. This is only 10 kilometers up, but came across a method that works pretty well. So I thought I'd share that with you. Also, I want to test sort of how effective in this level of gravity uh, ion thrusters are, which is why I've stopped here. As you can see, I am planning to go a lot higher. Okay, so the way that I have built this is I have built a carriage on the orbital tether, building the orbital tether. It's like tetherception. Yeah. Um, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've just replicated what I built in my how-to guide on actually to do these things. I'll link that in description. Now I have added a couple of extra wheels on the sort of say drive section and steering section of it. Um, now on top of here what I've got, I've got my welders set with, well they're set up here with uh, advanced rotors, that's the word I'm looking for. Now what this allows me to do is I've set for each of these like a, a maximum and minimum rotation so when I reverse it one way will be in against the projection to build and reversing it the other way will take it away from the projection so it's safe to move about. And on the bottom here obviously I've got a big old, uh, what do we call it, cargo container, that's the word I'm looking for, big old cargo container and um, I've got a connector which does actually, I can just drop it down when I park on the station, this will automatically connect to the station. Um, well, when I park it, that is. I, that I'll, I'll explain that when we get down there. And I'll explain about these projectors as well. But first, I want to show you this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a previous save to this. Right, okay. So this is the setup here. Um, I, th this is a save just before I started building the platform. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just show you this here. I've got it set at 3 kilometers an hour. Um, I've got my rotors in the right place. I'm going to lock them off, uh, which is number eight on my keyboard there. Take off my car, par parking brake, parking brake, and I'm just going to hold down the left mouse button and the forwards button. As you can see, it just builds as it goes up. Now this is faster than using a ship because on a ship you can't really safely do one or even two rails at the same time. So you have to do sections of each rail. So that means you're going up and down each section up to like eight times basically. So, yeah, at least with this, it's a, it looks slow, but it's actually fairly fast. Now, if you really want to get some speed on this, what you can do is if you just want to get some distance up there um, and then come back and kind of complete it later, if you turn the speed up a bit, so what I've gone done there, I just press the three button to take it the speed up a little bit. I actually pressed the downwards button and reset it by accident, so I had to go in and do that. But anyway, I've taken it up to uh, what it should have been at. And now I'm going to press the P button, and as I go up, this won't completely construct it as you go up, but what it will do is it will make it possible to build on it. Now, obviously, that I haven't got enough steel plates there, as you can see. I've actually run out of them as I'm doing this, but as you can see, you'd be able to go up and you'd still be able to drive over that section there. So that's how this works. Um, what I'm going to do at the end is I'll go back to an even earlier save and just show you doing that all in one go. But that's the essential, that's the essential method of it. Um, what you want to do is, as you have a look at each of these rotors, they've got a lower and upper limit. So when I reset this, for example, this is currently at its lower limit. Um, now, if we have a look at one of the other rotors, this one will probably be at its... Uh, this one's at its upper limit. So depending on the rotor, uh, you'll have to do that. And you might find that something, a universal number doesn't work. You're going to have to play around a bit. But now if I unlock the rotors and reverse them... They all go to the opposite limit and you end up with a nice safe way to go down. Right, now I can lock these off. And I can take my speed up a bit. So I'll take it up here. Now I'd say if you don't want to reset your speed, don't take it down to zero. And don't take it above 330 because above that you might take it to like the maximum speed with too many clicks. So once you start seeing about 320, 330, don't, don't go beyond that. Right, so now when it comes to going back down there can be a slight issue. Um, it will start to, because you'll get some wiggle on the rotors, they'll start to actually make it drift off to one side. Now that does happen, I'll try and show you how to fix that. But essentially the way to fix that is as you're dropping down, what you would do is, you see it starts to, you start to get a little bit of a bounce in this sort of um, 
sort of 20 to 30 meters per second even at 15 you start getting it so what you do is as that as you try and just keep it in that there just by pressing the forwards button and that will kind of reset itself it looks like it's more dangerous but it's not that would actually force it to bounce into the right uh, shape there or the right alignment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let this sort of go down here if it starts happening i'll show you how to fix that right so as you see there it, it started to drift off to the side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start going down and i'm just going to keep it in that sort of slightly bouncing sort of state and what it will do is it will just gradually bounce itself back into where it should be as you can see there it's, it's actually now it, it just seems to be that for some reason some sections the physics are going to be a bit funky so we just keep letting it bounce about a bit and you should see it starting to realign once it gets past the bit it's having issues with now if it doesn't do that um on its own as you see okay so that's almost realigning itself there there we go start there we go that's now realigned itself so I didn't really have to do anything other than just keep an eye on that once you get past an area like that though it might be worth just sort of going up a little bit and then sort of pushing it back down just so it just properly realign itself because it won't do it on the way down it does it more when you actually push the power upwards so as you can see if it starts to drift again Right, so that's starting to uh, it's drifting a little bit. So we'll just um, take the speed up a bit here. Let's get to, let it bounce around a bit. There we go. It's realigned itself. So this is just something you do need to keep an eye on as you're going back down. And the more weight you have on it, the more that's going to happen. I don't think there's anything you can do to fix that. You've got rotors on here. It's going to bounce. It's just the way the current build of the game is that you're not going to be able to counteract that. But as you can see, I was going pretty much full speed there and I was able to counteract it quite quickly. Okay, so inside of here, I've just got a couple of projectors sitting on the inside of these actual rails here. Uh, the, the, the reason it's up this high is I was testing out a few things and it ended up being this high when I, just, when I decided on this method. All I did was I wanted to create, if I created a 14 kilometer stretch of track, um, and then I made a blueprint from that, I just loaded it up on the projectors. It was ridiculously easy to do. Once I had it on one projector, what I did was I just put a control station down, did the horizontal up and down, vertical up and down, forwards up and down, um, or positive and negative, increment and decrement, that's the word I'm looking for. Put them on there, lined it up, okay, turn that one off, turn the other projector on, line that one up with another set of controls. It was really simple to do, and I haven't had to touch it all the way up from there. So that from there, that's just been, yeah, no problem at all. So it's really simple, just, just go and build yourself a massive track in creative and use a blueprint from that. Okay, so when it comes to actually connecting this to the station, I'll show you that, it's a little bit more tricky. And now if I press P to park it, we should find that the connectors have automatically connected, which they have. Sweet. Now the way that's done is, this will not line up. Um, no matter how, how you've got this set up, this won't line up with the station. So you can't be guaranteed you're going to get the right place by just putting a block down. So what I've done is I've built a couple of pistons here, just going forwards and up. And all I did was I put some controls on this, which were turn the piston on and off, reverse that piston, turn the piston on and off. And I just did that um, once this has come down in the normal alignment. So if it's not offset, or it is offset, just take it up and let it sort of gradually drop down again. Go to the normal alignment, go to the point where I saw the yellow on there, and then I just left it in that place basically, and it's always been fine since then. Important point with this though is don't have any strength on these connectors. I take the strength down to zero. You don't want it trying to force it into a position because that will just cause a clang, and you'll either lose that or that. So yeah, neither of which is a nice option, <laughs> especially if you if you've got a very long track. You really don't want that. Just put it. No, no, it's not going there. Right. So that was that was basically what goes on with that. And pressing P on the parking would actually connect and disconnect connectors. That's also the reason I've gone for this because I was originally trying to refuel or restock this with a, a hydrogen ship going up there. The problem with that was that. I kept accidentally pressing P. Yeah, not good. And you can't leave the uh, you can't leave the inertial dampeners on there because it will just yeah, cause havoc up there. 
Right, so that's the basic method there. So I've got a carriage. I've got my welders on top of it. Got projectors. I've just got a massive blueprint that I'm just going up and gradually building. Um, this can connect to the station. I just drag stuff into it with what I need. Actually getting the materials for this is probably... I mean, this is the longest part of it here, is getting, obviously, building it. But actually getting the materials is probably the, the, the longest setup for it. Um, I've got seven assemblers here that are constantly making steel plates. And to be able to power those amount of steel plates, or to, to make those steel plates constantly, I need two refineries constantly making iron. Now, I think it's probably an idea for you to split off your iron. So what I've done here is I've actually split off every single one of my ores here. And I've just doubled up on my iron. So what I've got is every refinery has got a conveyor sort of going into the top. I've whitelisted the ore. In the case of iron, I've got scrap metal whitelisted and drain ore. So that will pull from wherever they are. It will pull the ores in. And then on the output of this, I've just got a white list of iron ingots or whatever ingots I'm doing for this. Um, and that just means that none of these will potentially pull out of anything else. And I'll only output once they've actually created something. So nothing pulling from another direction can potentially pull the ore out of the refinery. So I've got two refineries here with speed, two speed and two yield modules on each of them. Uh, and that seems to supply or more than supply my seven assemblers that I've just got constantly building plates. So to be able to make all of that stuff and have yourself supplied well, you're going to have to be able to get an absolute ton, well, millions of tons actually, of ore to be able to do this. Um, now you're going to be outside the block limits anyway, so I would recommend going big or go home. As you can see, what I've done here is I have gone very big. And I've gone home in a box a couple of times where it crashed. But we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> anyway, so this can actually pick up like 2 million units of iron ore at a time. Um, and it uses just atmospheric thrusters. Definitely worth investing the time into learning or making something like this. Um, because this allows me to just grab so much at a time. I can just leave it going and going and going. And I have time to then work on other stuff while it's going. So I'm not constantly going back and forth to getting the iron ore. This will fulfill like maybe 300,000, like a full load on this will do 300,000 steel plates basically. Um, and as you can see, essentially what I do is I right click down to the point where I'm about where the ore is and then I dig. So it just reduces the amount of stone that I've got. And as you can see, once you've done that once, you can actually see the line where ores are. So that, that you'll see that for every type of ore. Um, now also the final thing is underneath here I just have a conveyor sort of that just pulls all stone from everywhere and just drops it apart from I do have a refinery that has stone so obviously can't put it out there and it's just literally underneath here every time I put a load of stone in there it just pulls it out and just ejects it from a connector down into a hole underneath the station right so that's the setup that you kind of need to be able to supply this I would say minimum two refineries constantly making iron um, seven assemblers that are making steel plates. You could probably go with more. And that should give you enough to make this in about four hours. Once you've done the setup, it's taken me about four hours to go from that red line, or four hours of gameplay, from that red line up to the very top there. Not accounting for times where I've decided to change the design. Um, and now I'm just going to show you it, like how effective it is. So I'm just going to go back to an even earlier save where I hadn't built that high. Right, here we go. I've just loaded up a previous save. Let's grab all of the steel plates we currently got. Oh, we've got 48,000 in there. Okay. So I've only got 48,000 in there. I think this was just before I went and started doing the platform. But anyway, so what I can do is I've got my speed at 309. We'll take it up to 327. Take my parking brake off. And I should be able to just go zoom, zoom up to the top. Yep. No problems at all. And I've never really had a clang on the way up um, unless I've forgotten to move the, um, the the motors out of the way. Even not locking them off doesn't seem to be too bad of a problem, but uh, which I have forgotten to do. But locking them off does seem to make things more stable. And I do have share inertia tensor on those. I don't know if you picked that up earlier on. Okay, here we are. We're approaching the end of this. So... I'll park up 
about there. There we go. Okay, so now oh, I missed one. Only one. Um, now I'm gonna take the lock off, switch them around. And I'll take my speed down to 21 because I want to show you that way that you can actually go up quite quickly if you just want to get a bit of distance on. So like they're all now in the right place. Lock them off. The parking brake off. As you see, I'm actually going up. Eh, you know, it's not particularly fast, but it's still. Yeah. You're thinking construction-wise, it's quite fast. But here we go. And as you can see, it's like you can potentially just do what I'm doing here. Is you don't have to get every block. And it will be stable enough for you to actually drive up it. So we're just, we're just going to take this up to the point where we start running out of um, stuff. It should be not too far. And honestly, I find this particularly satisfying doing this. I just think it looks so cool how fast you go up. Right, so as you can see, so that's one way you can do it. If you just want to get a little bit of distance on it and then come back and finish it off later on. Uh, you will get like the majority of the materials in there as well um, for you know, most of the track to be built. And then just showing you um, at the slow speed, you do build it um, a lot slower, but you definitely get everything. So I've got mine set at three kilometers an hour. And we'll start from where it's up here. So there we go. And if you're willing to be patient, which I really am, you can just sort of gradually go up the, the platform like this um, and it's very stable. Uh, I've once again never had a clang that has broken while actually building it. The only issues I've ever had is on that free fall down and if you're willing to take the time to go down slowly it's not really an issue either. And this is hardly a slow method compared to if you try to do this with a ship. Right anyway, I'll lock that off there. I hope you guys found this useful. This wasn't meant to be a specific, this is how you do this. But this is a couple of methods that I thought might be useful for anyone who was trying to build an orbital tether or, or a space elevator. I'm, I'm going to be testing out a few ideas to take this even higher beyond the 20 kilometer limit. But I, once again, I don't want to put them in until I can be guaranteed it's not going to break your game. Because building this amount and going beyond the build limits is still going to cause problems anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't want to put them out there until I'm confident. But anyway, guys, I hope you found this useful. Hope it helps you out. Have fun. Catch you all soon.